uh, that's another 10 pounds from now. <laughs> Sorry. My friends at work thought I should start with that. That was actually a very joke. Um, this is a tribute to, uh, it's my only joke I think that is a little bit Mitch Hedberg-like. I realized I do this already. If you'd like to do some crowd participation, get out your phones and send your friends a text message that just says text message. And then tomorrow when you see them, ask them, did you get my text message? It's awesome. Anyway, I, I've done that. It's funnier for the person sending it than, than it is receiving it, but uh, who cares, right? All right. My name's Craig. My, my pronouns are he and him. Um, although, I heard about this kid. I'm a little jealous. It's a true story. It's like uh, some university, and he's requesting the university call him, uh, his pronoun is your majesty. And so his professor has to call him Your Majesty. And I thought, well, that's nice. You know, I should, I should aspire to that or Your Highness or I kind of like kung fu movies. What if your pronoun was just Masa, Masa Craig? Not, you know, from kung fu movie stuff. Anyway, pardon me. Um, I am single and I am looking for a woman whose pronouns are her and she. Um, but if uh, she sees herself as a gay man trapped in a woman's body, that could work. I mean, I, th I think that's the thing now. There's a lot of, you know, challenges, but I'm pretty open. She might be fun, you know. Um, and so on behalf of all men, I would like to just say that women are beautiful the way they are. You have plenty of bells and whistles. You really don't need to use plastic surgery, okay? Seriously. Woo! Oh my God. Small tits are beautiful. I've had so many conversations with dudes who are like, dude, you too? Yeah, small tits are beautiful. What are women fucking doing? I don't know. What are they doing to their face? I don't know. Anyway, I, uh, I work in a really fancy hotel and I see this, this every day and I just kind of feel sorry. But I want to turn around and just say, women, you're beautiful the way you are and, uh, and not go on the negative side of it. But, uh, you know, it's really, I mean, I watch television every day, I watch the people on the news have the most fucked up faces. And, and, and I mean, I'm just worried about the young ladies out there looking at them like, that's how I should want to look? Like, fucking, God, I don't know what. Like, huge cheekbones, the squished fucking nose, the eyes, fuck, ooh, and the huge lips. And I think, by the way, I think not only are men doing it, but I think Ronan Farrow, I stared at his lips for like 10 minutes in a fucking interview. I think he's got injected lips. A dude... I mean, he's gay, so I guess it makes sense, but uh, it's just weird. Anyway, I just, all right, okay. On behalf of all men, um, for the men who are kind of on the margin, they're kind of on the fence, they're not really sure which side to fall, I just want to let you know, on behalf of all men, skinny jeans are not an option. Oh my fucking God, you poor motherfuckers. Whoever's buying your clothes, and if it's you, you're fucked. But, uh, and the ones that don't even go to your fucking ankles, holy shit. And then if they're pink, oh my fucking God, all right? And on the subject of that, men need to be told, holy shit, okay? You should never be wearing fucking clothes that your manliness needs to overcome. If you're wearing a pink fucking shirt, you're talking about, oh, I'm feeling confident today because I'm wearing a pink shirt. Here, that's fucked up. Shut, shut the fuck up. Don't wear pink fucking clothes if, unless you're not sure where you fall on the margin between that a man or not and that's okay if you're not but fuck just don't work yeah it's wrong uh <coughs> okay so mary if you look at yeah, they use polls about married people 65 percent of married people all met at, at work okay you can't meet people at work anymore because you can't say anything to a woman at work right so if you're interested in someone you pretty much got to just never say anything so, on behalf of all men, I'd just like to say, women, you can say something to us. It's okay. We would like that. Okay, just, we will not turn you into human resources. We just need, we need to know there's green light if there ever is. It's the only way we can be polite and approach you and know that it's okay. So please, you know, let us know if you are interested in, in us, because it's a lot harder than it used to be to, to approach a woman, right? All right, so I was once in a pretty bad marriage. Um, 
which is uh, really fun. So it started out like, you know, you wake up in the morning and, and she just yanks the covers off the sheet. It's traumatizing. You're waking up on the wrong side of the bed, it's a real thing, okay? And if you do that, your whole whole day is fucked up, okay? So do your best not, not to wake up on the wrong side of the bed. So what I did for a while was just get up at 5.15 and go to the gym. It opened at 5.30 and therefore the, I wouldn't go through that. Then, you know, I mean, another year or two goes by, I realize it's just agonizing. Sleeping next to a woman who uh, won't, you know, you can't be affectionate with is just torture. So I eventually just slept on the couch and that's all good. Nevertheless, it made me think, okay, looking back. Now, what if, oh, come on now, what if, Rolls were reversed. What if women woke up before their husbands and looked over, tits, bing, pussy pounding, looking at him like, oh my God, wouldn't it be great if he just takes some interest in me this morning before I go to work? Oh, it'd be so great. And then what's, what if the man woke up and to his wife saying, honey, could you just put it in me for 30 seconds? Just 30 seconds, that's all I need. I don't want to be frustrated all day at work. Just put it in me for 30 seconds, please. Fucking awesome. Anyway, so that's uh, that's my thoughts about that. You know, looking back on my b- bad marriage, uh, <laughs> I have P P T S D. That's presidential P T S D, and I and I have a, a beautiful bit. Uh, so what if, right? What if uh, there was uh, this newscast where there was a guy at the lawn of the White House saying. Um, so we finally got uh, the president out of the White House. Uh, we expected there might be something strange, um, but it's more, it's more than we really anticipated. Uh, before, before we got him out of the White House, he took a sharpie to all the other presidents and drew tits and penises on all of the other presidents. Aww. And not only did he do that, but he pissed in the corners of all of the rooms. It's, uh, it's, again, it's sad, it's disturbing, it's not entirely a surprise, which is sad, but nevertheless, that's our, that's our former president. Um, can I keep going? Come on, come on. What? We only have five minutes. Five minutes? Five minutes? Is there somebody else? Yeah. Oh, there is? Shoot. All right. All right. All right. Let me just give you a quick, uh, bit of, uh, so this is a bit of information piece. Uh, um, oh, two, quick one. Best thing I learned in my 40s, if you don't know this. The most, the best way to uh, alleviate pain and to uh, speed up healing are Epsom salt baths. It's the best thing I learned in my forties. Now, when I was uh, twenty in summer of '89, I rode a, a bicycle across the United States. I know that sounds crazy. I did it three times. Um, and so, when you ride across the United States, you pick your route, and, and I went all the way across the South. And I had to tell people, okay, so in Texas, I'm going from Bider or from El Paso to Bider, okay. Now, when you tell that to a Texan, they're like, oh, shit, you know about Viter, okay? Ah, oh, shoot, I'm sorry, we lost that gentleman. So, uh, if you're not white, this is a very valuable thing to know. So, all across fucking Texas, people say, hey, you know about Viter, you know about Viter, do you, do you know about Viter? It is one of the homes of the Ku Klux Klan, okay? It's a border town with Louisiana, and, uh, and, and of course, I got a, a through there, okay, and I asked the gentleman there about, and he told me a bad story, I'm not going to repeat it here. But in case you're ever on a road trip across the United States of America, and if you ain't white, be fucking aware of Vider, Texas. God, I got one more. Okay. It's okay. Listen, it's okay. It's okay to be a Howley. All right? You just don't want to be a fucking Howley. The Howley that puts a cigarette out of the beach. The Howley that shits next to the fucking toilet. Or the Howley hitchhiking that stinks like my balls. Anyway, thank you. Woo!